What's going on YouTube? Middle Complex here and today we're going to be taking a look at some new arrivals and some interesting things coming soon to Blade HQ. If you want to hang out and hear my commentary on this stuff, uh, great. If not, no worries, I completely understand. I'm going to link these pages right down below in the description for your convenience so that you can check them out on your own if you want to. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. All right, it's been a while. What do we have here? We have some new combat Troodons, probably a bunch, honestly. Boker Kalashnikov drop point, button lock. These are okay. I mean, honestly, if you're going to pick up a Boker Kalashnikov, pick up the automatic. That's still one of the best side-opening automatic knives in the budget territory. The manual flippers honestly leave a little bit to be desired. Uh, it's hard to, it's, they're not really keeping up, in my opinion, with some of the other quality, um, you know, production button lock budget knives that are out there. Heretic Colossus, I've always been a little bit interested in this knife, but truthfully, I want it to be the same size as the Microtech Scarab, and all of the videos I've seen is just not quite there. I, I don't think that that necessarily means it's a subpar knife. I just, I feel like it's the combat, I'm sorry, it's the uh, Microtech Scarab's competition from Heretic. And it just seems like it's not, it's just not there, right? But I don't know. It does look pretty cool. I like that green one though. Uh, moving on here, Petrified Fish Hair Tail Liner. That's kind of neat for 69 bucks. Giggity. Let's see uh, uh, what the steel is. Bowler K110. That's uh, what we call Fancy D2. Essentially, that's Bowler's D2. Bowler makes M390. I very much doubt there's any difference. But it is, it's, you know, imagine D2 with a top hat. Uh, these are, yeah, actually all of these are pretty nice looking. All the different colors there. Um, oh boy, the James Brand, the client. If you're new to the knife world, um, James Brand, their knives are just inexplicably massively overpriced in my opinion. They have worked with some quality OEMs and the quality, I want to make sure that this is, you know, clear. The quality of their knives that are made by, for example, Riot are very good, but that's because Riot is making them. Riot is making the knife and then they're putting their name on it and saying, you're going to have to pay a hundred to 150 more dollars because it says the James brand on it. Right. Um, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of this company. Uh, if you like them, I think that's perfectly fine. My opinion is, is that they are charging more money for no reason. As someone who has over 4,000 uploads and has handled knives in all territory territories of the knife world in, in terms of pricing parameters, James Brand's pricing makes absolutely no sense. For example, we have <laughs> the James Brand, the client. Why have you put the twice in the name of your knife? That's just weird. We have what essentially looks like the Benchmade Griptilian. Uh, I have no idea who the OEM is for this. It says, I'm going to guess, yeah, this is, their, this is USA. I have no doubt that the majority of this knife is made in the USA. And CPM MagnaCut, that's great. USA MagnaCut knives exist for substantially less money and are made with essentially the same materials as this knife. I would take a look at Hogue if you want a great example of how oddly overpriced these things are. We have carbon fiber and MagnaCut. No indication on how it is heat treated. And do we have any titanium on it? Perhaps the pocket clip. It appears that everything else is steel. So yeah, that's not enough there to justify that price tag. $449. Do you guys know what a base Hinderer XM18 costs? Some of the highest USA in-house production quality that we see on the market. Hinderer, Chris Reeve, Demco, right? That's where they're pricing this stuff. That's where they think they're at. No, um, I don't think so. I, I don't know that I need to read any more about that knife. I'm not a huge fan. You can make up your own choice. This is, of course, my opinion. I have to say that, right, at this point with the channel being the size that it is, I would imagine, you know, I don't want anybody trying to come after me, but I, uh, it is my opinion that the pricing on James Brand knives doesn't make sense when you compare their actual competition, right? If this if this knife was priced somewhere around 300, all right, you know maybe so, right? But in the meantime, I would say just look at Hogue. Uh, let's move on here. Boy, I do like that Microtech. So I keep trying to um, find a reason to pick up an automatic version of the SOCOM Elite. I, I remember when these were very scarce. The USA SOCOMs, the manual ones, and the automatic ones became essentially lost relics. 
And now we are fortunately back in a time period where you can get them. And honestly, good on Microtech because they didn't bump the price very much. I picked up my manual version for, well, my wife picked it up for me for, I think, 280, 285 bucks. I don't think they're, I don't think they're outrageous considering I picked, my wife got mine for me in 2018. That was six years ago. Not bad. You can also easily pick up MSIs now. I mean, you know, given that a lot of the ones hanging around on websites are serrated. Microtech, I know you're not going to watch this. The two-tone thing is cool. I think people would like to see a solid color, right? Solid black, solid Cerakote FDE or whatever this is. I think that's cool. These are the injection mold plastic versions. Honestly, they're still worth picking up because if you plan on picking up something from Original Goat, <laughs> they have some excellent. If you've seen my MSI, I have some textured aluminum scales from Original Goat that I've attached to my MSI. They fit perfectly and really just evolve it, right? It's your 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 Pikachu is going to evolve into Charizard real quick uh, by attaching those scales 100%. And they've got titanium scales coming out. So if you have a dream of creating a titanium MSI, just pick up the injection mold plastic version. It'll cost you less money in the long run. Moving on here, some Southern Grind spider monkeys. Are they still? No, they're making these with Magna Cut now. That's pretty cool. So here's an example. I, I mean, I know not everybody loves the Southern Grind spider monkey, but here's an example of a company that is um, using. Is this? I wonder. Let's see, textured or a solid liner mechanism. I'm not sure what the liner is, right? But we have drop point uh, CPM Magna Cut and OD Green G10 in this case, USA made for $277, right? Um, and in this case, we have black. I think they even offer, um, is this carbon fiber? Yeah, that's carbon fiber right there. So James Brand, what's, uh, <laughs> where's that extra money going? I mean, uh, Southern Grind, which is not necessarily known as the best deal on the internet by any stretch of the imagination, this knife costs two hundred and seventy-seven dollars. Well, you see here, metal complex is only seven point three inches, and the James Brand seems to it seems to be a lot closer to eight inches, if not a little bit higher. That makes no sense to me. Um, I would I have no doubt in my mind that within the first ten pages of Blade HQ's new arrival page, I can find countless examples um, to back up what I'm saying. I just don't understand. Right. The Red Horse Knife's, uh, I'm sorry, the Red Horse Knife Works War Pig Frame Lock is a cool knife, has a lot of personality, and it's been around for a while. These are now produced in China. Um, I can't remember who the OEM is. No, no, this is wrong. What? USA? Mm, yeah, I just handled one of these. And I talked to them and I'm pretty sure they said that it was a Chinese OEM. This says made in the USA though. So these are USA war pigs. Hmm. Okay. Double check with Blade HQ on that. I was under the impression that these were not made in the United States. If they are though, that's a consider amount a considerable why am I having trouble saying considerable? A considerable amount more in terms of the materials and it's contoured titanium, titanium frame lock, right? S35VN, right? But a bit more justification for the price tag considering what goes into creating something like this. Milling titanium is a lot more expensive than milling carbon fiber, right? Especially when it's contoured. A lot of people overlook that or assume that it's nothing. Uh, anybody ever bought one of those machines? I'm not saying I have, but I do, I do know <laughs> one of those machines that contours titanium that's not cheap. It's not cheap to maintain. It's not cheap to operate, right? Moving on. Uh, wow, some custom Gavcos. Uh, those are those are going to be ultra high-end, semi-custom, mid-tech, small batch, in-house. That's where that price comes from. Not saying I agree with it, but I can understand why it's higher. I don't want to get locked into this because this just creates a ton of arguments. Uh, superlative Knives Matador. This is... A kind of a cool looking knife. Hold on. Superlative. Superlative knives. Hmm. Who are you? 8.78 inches. Thank you for making something that is on the larger side. We exist in a knife world where large EDCs are pretty scarce. M390. Doesn't surprise me that it's China, but I'd like to know, are you your own OEM? Or are you working with somebody else? It is a cool looking knife though. 
Uh, the superlative matador transforms everyday carry with its ergonomic design and visually striking aesthetics. I agree with that. It does look nice. Okay. Um, it's titanium and variations of carbon fiber micarta G10, it looks like. So, yeah. Okay. Kind of neat. Very inexpensive. Well, I mean, they're not that inexpensive. Are they? Is, are you guys still using AUS 10 a Yeah. Just AUS 10. Really wish that they would stop doing that. Uh, I wish that that was something else. Anyways. Kubi. Ooh, we got the Pro. Um, so this is these blue knives that Protec releases. Number one, these are made in the USA. Like legitimate. Like this is a, I think this is a great price for USA knife because it's bringing a lot of cool stuff to the table. Number two, what is this sapphire blue? It just looks like blue paint. It is not. If you've seen my um, Godfather, this is a high reflex. It's like a satin blue. It's beautiful. When they say sapphire blue, they mean sapphire. It is nice. Also, it is the equivalent. My understanding is it is the equivalent to a PVD coating. In fact, I believe it is a PVD coating. Uh, sometimes this is referred to as DLC. It is not DLC. A true DLC is always black. This is a blue PVD coating, and it is the only one on the market that looks like this. Protect does an excellent job with it. It is beautiful. This is MagnaCut. It's an aluminum frame, but a nice aluminum frame uh, with some texturing on it. Very cool. You even get a little, little bit of a pearly uh, inlay there on the button. Really cool stuff. Much more deserving of that price tag. At this point, I'm just like giving alternative examples to back up what I'm saying here. We have some Shadow Edition or some Operator Edition uh, Protex. If you're not into the colors, uh, these actually have tritium on the buttons. That's what that little line is right there. So it glows permanently because it's irradiated. Um, but not in a dangerous way, right? Just a, slightly. This flew way under the radar. Did you guys know that this is here? I didn't even realize until just the other. This is the Yojumbo and M4. This is a Blade HQ exclusive. An M4 Yojumbo. That's the big boy. M4 in Jade. If you don't like the color of flu booger, then you might not enjoy this, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> this is a su supremely weird looking knife, but man, it is a freaking giant razor. 9.29 inches made in the United States, CPM M4, that is no joke. I feel like people are holding out for the DLC one that is usually the next in line when they drop stuff like this. But if you don't want the DLC, which does look cool, honestly, if, I mean, admittedly, I do like the DLC ones a bit better. Number one, it's real DLC. It's spider coat. Number two, CPM M4 is not stainless, right? If you're like me and you live in an area where that's not really much of a problem, then you can get away with this, right? But, you know, if you live in an area where corrosion can be a problem, then you might want to wait for that. Either way, I don't think that's a bad price considering it's made in the United States. That is a very watermelon-themed uh, more active basic. Cool though. Some of the best um, dollar for dollar utility on the market. If you're not familiar with more active, those are super tough, like shockingly tough. This is a knife that I very much enjoy the Kaiser justice. Uh, that's an awesome release from Kaiser and it is big. In fact, yeah, it says 8.6. It feels like an even bigger knife than that. This feels like a, this feels like an XL folding knife and N690, not bad, especially considering we are in budget territory, right? Uh, that's a cool knife. Oh, we have the Alliance Easy E 2.0s. So uh, you might be looking at that price and going, e well, this is an integral. I own this knife and I love it. I use it constantly. Oh, this is freaking Zerkatai? <laughs> oh, man. I was going to say that seemed a little bit more pricey than mine. These are Zerkatai variants. Oh, I love that. Yes, very good. Ooh, Alliance Designs. This is a Riot produced Ray Laconico designed integral. Very cool. If you're going to spend that type of money on a knife and you don't mind the Chinese OEM, this is great, right? You're looking at that and you're like, at that price, it should be made in the United States. If they made ex this exactly in the United States and put the Zerkatai on it, it'd be an $800 knife easily, probably more. Um, but that's, uh, that's really cool. I, I'm a huge fan of that. I, I like that a lot. All right, moving on here. Boy, I don't recommend... Well, I mean, I know who Boker is. I just don't recognize some of these other brands here. 
Uh, the good boy. I'd love to. I'd love to find out that they've improved the good boy's button lock, but I honestly don't know. The bag knives fixed dagger. That's kind of cool. A bag production dagger. <laughs> I kind of want to hold on. Ten ninety five. Okay. I mean, it's ninety two bucks. Where are they making this in China? Eh. God dang it. I do like that profile. That's a big dagger too. Is it actually sharp on both sides? Oh, it is. Ooh. Got that bag look too. That's really cool. I like that. I have no use for it. This is, you know, it, it like obviously I have affiliate links, so I do this, and like you guys go down in the the, in the description, you buy stuff, and I make commissions. But I'm I'm largely also shopping for myself. <laughs> oh man, Kubi Monster Dog Nova. Do we have a different steel on the Nova? What do we got here? D two. All right, Kubi. Kubi makes a good knife. I'm just not, I'm not super excited about their decisions with steel. And it's not that D2 is a bad choice. It's just, you know, everybody else is doing other stuff. Kubi Royal. I've not handled the, the Creon. I want to call that the Crayon. Uh, but I know that that's not right. Okay. Yeah, interesting. I, I don't know. I, I'd like to look at more Kubi stuff. I just, I think they make a nice, I mean, like if you're, if you're just like dropping into the knife fold for the first time and you've seen some Kubis, you're like, I kind of like the look of that. And it's like 50 bucks. Go ahead. It's a, it's, they're well-made, right? They just, their competition is using arguably better materials for the money, especially when it comes to the blade. Uh, a lot of companies are also doing more complicated things with inlays, contoured scales, stuff like that, right? I do like the momentum. I do like the momentum a lot. And I think... Kubi's Ultim is better than a lot of the Ultim that I've seen um, flying around out there. The Momentum is one of the better front flippers in the budget territory. I I, I do like that. That's actually pretty cool. I actually, I kind of like this one. If you're going to pick up a Kubi today, try out the Momentum. That's a cool knife. And these, to my knowledge, maybe they're not. They just look contoured. I like the way that they've textured that though. It's it's neat. Maybe here's a regular momentum with oh super booger green. <laughs> this is I've had the flu for two weeks. Booger green, um, D two, and uh, this looks flat to me. So, but you know a little bit of uh, texturing there. Yeah, a little bit of peel ply texturing. Okay, moving on. What the heck, artisan cutlery ravine? They didn't offer to send me this weird guy. They still make the Orthodox. That is wild. That The Orthodox was my first artisan cutlery, and I bought it. If I remember correctly, I, I ordered that online. And I was like, eh, it's okay. But they've improved dramatically since, I mean, the first one that I handled, it was literally six years ago. So some Balasongs, DPX, Heat. Oh, they make a carabiner, like a budget version of that. That's cool. Uh, the Hydra, that's the Godson, the Big Cleric 2, and Magna Cut. Mm, concept Shikari. This is an, oh, oh, wait. This is a button lock now? Dude. Oh, my goodness. Timascus on both sides. S35VN and a titanium frame. Wow. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. That is cool. For $291, that is super cool. I like that a lot. EOS, I'm still very tempted to check out an EOS. Um, I just have never had an opportunity. We have some Tactile Knife Co. Ember Maverick. Are these, they have to be Cerakote Titanium because you can't get red on the spectrum. Yeah, almost certainly. Well, even if it doesn't say, I promise you, you can't anodize titanium to get that color of red. You can get close, you can get magenta, but that red has got to be Cerakote. Moving on, Concept Little Main Street. Uh, that's actually a really cool knife. Big fan of um, a lot of Concept. Not everything that Concept designs, but I, I am a big fan of their quality. I, I do like the, um, the, uh, the Corvid series. Heretic Hyperion Flashlight. That's kind of cool. I do like me a good custom flashlight, and as far as the world of custom flashlights goes, um, I know it's kind of like 
people look at the lumens and it's kind of like how people look at the blade steel on really expensive knives and are like, for that much money, it should be adamantium, right? It, it stops being about, you know, the, the most ultra exotic whatever steel or the materials in general. I mean, that's part of the equation and it becomes more about where it's made, how it's made, how much time is put into it, whether or not it's mass produced, right? It's the same thing. Same thing it's always been. So if you didn't know, custom flashlights get way more expensive than this. This is nothing. It's just like pocket knives. They, they're, there's so much out there. The Civivi Star Flare is one that's coming to me. I don't have it yet, but it does look interesting. Uh, Civivi is probably one of the most impressive budget brands out there right now. Ooh, this is back. The BOA. Didn't even know. Um, Civivi is one of the most impressive budget brands out there right now. Um, let's talk about this. So this, guys, is... Hold on. Yeah. When they say it's mirror polished, I know you can't tell. I have one. It's mirror polished. They mean mirror polished S90V and full Timascus on both sides for $749. I know that's a lot of money, but I have never seen a knife with mirror polished S90V. A lot of people look at that heat, but the only heat treat is a 50 to 61. That's actually appropriate for S90V. That's This is correct. This is where it should be. This is a very nice knife. I, I own it and I love it. I kept it in my personal collection when they sent me an example for review. Uh, you can't, I mean, come on, can you blame me? Uh, $749 is a lot of money. But if you've ever like lusted after, and I know not everybody does, if you've ever lusted after Timascus and like mirror, but you want something really shiny, you know that the bare minimum that you're gonna pay normally is like 1500 bucks. And honestly, in today's market, good luck even finding something like that. Yes, it's made in China, but this is this is as close as you're gonna get, and it really is impressive. Now, if you don't need all of that, you know, all that sauce, the standard one is gorgeous. These are contoured, and they're inlaid. Does it, it doesn't show the other side. I wish it did. It's like a sub frame lock. S35VN, also, this is fine for S35VN. Wish it was 6062, but it's fine, right? It's M390 that's got to be 60 to 62, in my opinion. Um, very cool, though. I, uh, I'm a huge fan of the BOA model. I wish that the designer... Hey, who's the designer here? You'll make... It, this is a cool knife at seven and a quarter inches, right? Who's the designer? Come on, we didn't put his name in here. Gosh darn it! Well, you can you can find the designer if you look up my video on this knife. They need to do a boa that's like eight and a half inches. Do the same exact thing. Make them like this, like this. Do, do just make a boa that's larger. Not that every small knife needs to have a large version, but like well. I like the idea of knives having small and large versions so that people who want small can go small and people who want the larger can go larger. But I would I. If this right now was eight and a half inches, I would pay that money for it. I already have this one, but I would buy another one just to have. I think that would be awesome. That would be spectacular. Bear Ops. Uh, this, we've talked about this. Oh, the Mint. Did you know that there's a Mint Manix 2 M4 Lightweight sitting here? Yeah. That's made in the USA and an exclusive to Blade HQ, so check that one out. The Riot PLXT is absolutely worth picking up. We are entering the, the age of the pivot operated locking system. Riot's PLXT is very cool. I do like that a lot. The Prado is a good, um, this is, if you're um, looking at the, the Pyrite and you're thinking, oh, I would love to pick up a version of the Pyrite that has the opening hole, but I can't get my finger in there because they have halfway covered it with the scale yes i hear you that's annoying this is the answer to that question this version the prado is what you're what you're after ar rpm 9 great uh that's a it's a great steel the only powder form steel you're going to find consistently in the budget world very good stuff moving on here o lights <laughs> the o light if you've looked at the james brand the whatever the something the trail justice whatever they called it and you're like wow no thanks that's too much money just buy olight's roboto 4 because it's 
um, essentially the same thing and a little shorter for $119. Yes, it's made in China, but I mean, you know, come on. Uh, Microtech Annex, what is different about this? Why does this look different? Huh. It's a cool integral, it's an integral knife. Well, one of the ones that's manufactured by Reich. Uh, moving on here, Tuya. I haven't heard a lot from Tuya here lately. Can't say that anything here is really screaming at me. Um, what's the steel on this guy? S90V though, that's pretty cool. Actually, that just became a lot cooler. With um, contour titanium and t uh, carbon fiber inlays. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, what do we have here? Is this the same knife? It's the Wrath. Wrath, Wrath, yeah. And these are all Wrath, so all S90V. That's actually kind of neat. I'm glad I looked at the steel there. Let's see what's on page 19, and then we're going to move back and go. Wow, the, the oh, that's the mini butcher. These are mini butchers. I wish they would bring back the full-size butchers. I haven't seen those for a bit. Cool knife. I remember my first USA mid-tech butcher uh, back in, uh, I think I bought that in 2014. Cool knife. Let's go to coming soon and see what we got. Now, understand that everything on the coming soon page could mean coming soon tomorrow or coming soon in four months. That's just how it works. I know everybody is, you know, whether you love it or you hate it, eyes are on this thing. Spyderco Bodacious Compression Lock. It's like the Shaman, but flat. Um, and, I mean, it's shaped a little differently. I really wish that they had contoured these because this is nothing new for Spyderco. Uh, they have updated the price tag, and by updated, I mean added $100 to where it would have been back in 2018. S30V, come on. I know Spyderco does a great job with S30V, and I'm being a steel snob right now, but I am just not incredibly excited about this. Now, you know, I'll get it. I'll, I'll um, whether I have to buy it or get a loaner or have a retailer send me one for review, I'll get my hands on it and give you guys my thoughts. Maybe I'll love it. I doubt I'll have anything new and nice to say about the price tag though. PM2 in Cobalt G10, what's the steel on this guy? Oh, CPM Spy 27. Okay, that's essentially, it's Spyderco's um, proprietary blend that is basically um, S45BN. Uh, and then they have another one in um, the Para 3. Oh, you can buy the black bodacious for $280. Interesting. Para 3 lightweight yellow. Is that the one that uses LC200N? Is that the salt? No, that's Magna Cut. Oh, but that but but their salt is now Magna Cut, right? Is that the case? Okay. I don't know. Civivi also does a good job with Ultim. So if you're like, yeah, I've heard some of these reviewers say that some Ultim looks like, you know, really super waxy PP and some of these companies uh they got like polished PP. Uh Civivi does the polished PP. We Nexusia, Nexusia. That is a cool looking knife. Wow, that is wild. I really wish we would send me something like this. This is cool. Still though, um we this isn't even coded. 58 to 60. Come on now. <laughs> Come on. Could be could be better than that. Uh, what I see here, oh, and that is the Native Chief, Military 2, Native Chief. Yeah, I'm going to go a few pages into this, and then we'll, I think we'll be done. Native Chief, Lightweight Salt. Are these in Magna Cut? Are these, in, these are green, LC200N, yeah. Not a bad steel. Uh, great steel, actually. Great steel. I don't know why I said it like that. Great steel. Not seeing anything, that's the... There's an example of something that's probably like it could drop like tomorrow, right? The Damascus, because we see those all the time. The Damascus rock eye in brass. I own that knife actually. In um, why do we have? Why are we doubling up on these listings? Huh. Okay. All right. Well, uh, lots of stuff at Blade HQ. I think we've gone on for quite a while now. So I hope you all enjoyed. Like I said, these pages will be linked down in the description. You can check them out if you'd like. Um, 
yeah, that's going to be it today, guys. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.